So we're back at chapter one. We've got a book like Job. And the question is, why does God allow? And you fill in the blank. And the number one reason is it's sin. But then we go back to the age-old question is, well, if God's all-knowing and he is, and he knew Lucifer would do what he did, and he did, and he knew Satan would go after Adam and Eve with the fruit, and why did God allow this all to happen? Now we're faced with a consequence in Habakkuk, which is really an interesting book to study. Israel's been taken captive by the Syrians. Judah's about to be taken captive by the Babylonians and the Chaldeans. Now Habakkuk puts Judah as, you know, why such good people? They're not good. They're all sin. And I know what about all the children and all that? Sinners. Why does, why does this country allow women to do abortion? So we go into chapter 1, verse 12. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God? Aren't you forever? Haven't you always? God never celebrates a birthday. Because God never had a beginning and God will never have an ending. The angels have a time when God created them. And what man can't fathom is God always had, God always is. And he tells Moses, my name is I am. Not that I was, not that I today, not that I will be, but I am and I've always been I am. So Habakkuk lays out Jehovah, his God, the God of his fathers. My Holy One. We shall not die. O Lord, Thou hast ordained them for judgment. And O my O mighty God, Thou hast established them for correction. This is the this is the Chaldeans. God, you made this Babylonian army. You made these people. They're going to judge your people. And you're going to use them for correction. How do we get in the place where we are today? Did you not even know from the beginning, from Exodus, that we would turn out the way we are? God, and the answer to God is, yes, I knew it. Why didn't God stop? Aren't you the everlasting God? Aren't you our only holy one? Aren't you the mighty God? I'm telling you, when you've been saved for, for many years, and you've gone down your Christian walk, and you have had many things happen in your life, good and bad, you get to the point in your life that the devil pops up and your own flesh pops up. God, who are you, God? And why? I don't know who told me one day, you never question, you never ask God why. Sometimes why will be why you are in the problems you are and what you can do to get out of them. Sometimes why is the direction? Where do you want me to go, Lord? I ask God all the time, Lord, am, am I in where you want me to be? I mean, Daytona Beach, Florida, Lord, is this where you want me? Am I doing what you want me to do? Are you pleased with minus the X 
sins of my life. Evidently, God is not happy with Judah that we have to have judgment and correction. And look, God ordained them. We talk about ordained preachers and, and, and deacons and, all that, and the people for the ministry. Here, Habakkuk says, there are people ordained by God. So I can tell you who your sins are and what your sins are. Paul speaks about our government. You know, they make fun of the president and all that. He's ordained. And not only are we told that we're to respect the, the people of the government, saved or lost, but doesn't the Bible also tell us those that are ordained, aren't we supposed to respect them too? They will give an account. Now, do you realize that, okay, you may not like, I don't get involved in politics. But do you realize, okay, whatever problems, I don't get involved in politics. But let's say Obama, Ooh, that's okay. Let's say President Biden is there and he's terrorizing the country. He may be put into that office by God, not Satan, for the judgment of this nation and for correction of this nation. He might be as bad as a president he is, what they say. All right, that may be, that's who you deserve. Why would you deserve a good and great president? Thou art purer eyes than to behold evil. You know, you know what pure is the definition? It is something that has not been touched by living creation of God. You can have up on top of a mountain snow that comes down and a river. And it's pure. And it's clean. The pureness will end when an animal has stepped into it. When, when, a, when a human has stepped and walked and put his hands into it. When defecation has happened to that water. When the pollutions of man touches that, then it becomes, it is no longer pure. And I think right here, this water you know, I got here, it doesn't say pure. But there's some water that you know, pure. No, it's not. The very fact that it's sitting in plastic, it's not pure. They say if you leave water in a plastic bottle and leave it out in the car and, 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 and some kind of chemical or chemical reaction. That's not pure. But thou art pure eyes than to behold evil. God, what do you do looking at this evil? <laughs> Look at every aspect Habakkuk is saying. You're the almighty. You're the only one. And you ought not to be looking at this. And if you allowed it, and can not look on iniquity. Well, yes, he can. He's been seeing iniquity all of a man. The violence we kept talking about. And what, what Habakkuk is saying, God, aren't you getting tired of looking at this? Come on, God. God. Do something and make it all stop. In God's timing. Wherefore, lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously? You, you see them doing it, God. And what the thing is, and I forget, what did he say? 600 years later, I think it was Jesus is going to be born. Look at all the treachery. Look at all the iniquity. 
Look at all that Jesus Christ himself suffered. And the Bible records as far as Jesus' own work. He says, listen, I can call legions of angels down from the Father. And he did it. The moment in the 33 and a half years of Jesus, Jesus God, because you know what? He could have gone off alone and said, Father, this is enough. No. This is ridiculous. Call down the angels. Call down the fire. And just destroy it all. There was a time that God told Moses, Hey, I'm going to wipe them all out. I'll start fresh with you. I'm sorry, Habakkuk would never have been here. And hold his thy tongue when the wicked devoured the man. Well, those the wicked. I said that, that usually that, that's a reference to the Antichrist. Devour the man. I know that's in italics. Italics is the King James translator said, we don't have a word here. So we're going to fill in with prayer, with earnest seeking of God to put here the man that is more righteous than he. So what Habakkuk is saying is, listen, God, you've seen all this sin. You see all this iniquity. People are getting murdered. People are getting, you, you see your people being harassed not getting what they ought to be getting, especially the Lord Jesus Christ, the man Christ Jesus. Okay. What did Jesus Christ deserve and do to get the cross? And did not come down by the power of God, did not come down by the power of angels. Man took him down off the cross. Dead. Habakkuk is speaking about Isaiah, Jeremiah himself, and Jonah, and, and people, prophets. People tried to live right. That widow woman, who, who the son of the prophets, her husband died, and she don't have enough oil. She don't even have enough to pay her bills. That's happened all through life. There are Christians today, they don't have enough. And they're out there striving, doing something for God. And how back is it? God, isn't it enough? You're the great God. And, uh, and wickedness and sin and Satan are winning. It looks like. It looks like. And Paul would go to say later on, the God of this world. And later on we will read of John that the heavens and earth will melt in the great white throne judgment and all those that are wicked are not written in the land's book of life and the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire that, okay, you see, then then but I guess every man I, I, don't, I don't think you say that there's anybody that I guess every man has a touch of impatience. Come on, God, can't you do it now? Can't you answer his prayer now? This missionary, you can't help him now? This woman with cancer, this, this man having problems with you, you can't help him now? And they're saved. There is no problem with bills in New Jerusalem. 
There's no barking dogs in New Jerusalem. There are no dogs in New Jerusalem. And you're getting the same aspect you got in Job. Job was righteous, wasn't he? Satan goes up to, to, to God on the throne. Now, how far he gets to the throne, I don't know. But he's in heaven, Revelation 12. That's the tribulation period. And God Almighty has a conversation with Satan. Behold my servant Job. And I'm not saying it right with the scriptures, but to this point, isn't he great? <laughs> Now let me let me state something here, okay? Let me state something in the eyes of Paul and the eyes of Job. You don't want God to be start bragging about you in front of Satan because your life is gonna be messed up. How do I know? Hey, isn't Paul really great? Well, God, let me give him a thorn. Oh, go ahead. Oh Lord, I got this thorn. I know. Lord God, Paul's a, I, oh Lord God, I got the sword, whatever it is. We don't know what it is. Yeah, I know. I allowed Satan to do it. But he, God didn't tell you, Paul that. But Paul's like, come on, God, can't you get rid of this? Habakkuk, Job. Nope. It's from Satan. Oh, thank you, God. And I'm going to use it so your pride does not get out of whack. Paul had a little thing of pride. Paul learned something that Job didn't. Show me in 42 chapters that somebody, the three friends, or the Lihu, certain names that I should know in the Bible, I don't. Or God himself in the world. Show me where, where Job was, hey, you know, this is Satan doing it. Who does, who does Job blame throughout the whole book? God. Look what God's doing to me. Look, look at all the things that God's doing to me. It's God's fault. I'm like this. Why didn't God kill me? Why didn't God allow me to? And God's up in heaven. I didn't do it. He did it. See? And the main problem with Job is we learn through the scriptures that Job was self-righteous. Judah is embedded in all kinds of gross sins that you got to read Jeremiah. You don't put Jeremiah and Habakkuk together. You don't read the Old Testament. You don't know what's going on. And there's one word that you think it's two words, but it's one word. That you can answer right now what we do understand about God. God is long-suffering. They just said, I read today, Norman Fell. And he's got many TV sitcoms. Some of them, they mock God. I've heard stories, and I can't prove this, but I've heard story, you know, how he mocks God and all that. He's over 100 years old today. Why does God let a man like that live a hundred and more years old? How come not this, this preacher that starts? I mean, there are stories that I, when I was in, in seminary, in institute, you know, here's this man. He's come out of school. He's built this church with his hands and his wife, and it's doing good, and it's blessing, and the guy dies. Young. There's some guy on a cooking show or something like that. He just died. I think they say he was 34 years old. That's young. How come this wicked man lives to be old age, and yet this Christian, this missionary, somebody who loves the Lord, dies at an early age? Well, Psalm says, it's a pleasure for God for the saints to die and go home. Maybe that's it. 
I don't know. Maybe God knows what their future would have been, and I'm going to... There's all kinds of speculation. And there's a lot of things to us creation that we look to the Creator and we demand an answer. What gives you right, God? And then you get it, well, you know, what gives you the right to, to question your employer? I mean, your boss, I mean, they're the ones that worked that company, started that company. They ought to know what they're doing because they've been in that company. Meanwhile, while you're going up to God, why is this happening, God? Blah, 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 hypocrite. Sometime in your Christian life, if you are serving God and doing right, Paul says, all they that live godly are going to suffer persecution, and you're going to get alone with God at times in your Christian life of living right, get persecuted, being shot in the back and stabbed in the back by other Christians, having no Christian friends, and you're going to get off all by yourself with God and you're going to say, God, why is this happening? What did I do wrong? And you may not have done nothing wrong. Elijah gets a threat by a woman and he goes off and he gets into anxiety and depression. And God can't use him no more. He said, you're going to go call Elijah. And there were some others in uh, Jehu, I believe. He doesn't do it. I think there's three or four men that, that God said, you're going to go anoint. And he does it. And as far as Elijah, he, he walks up to Elijah, he takes his cloak and throws it at him. And walks off. And Elijah's like, wait, 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 wait. Let me go say goodbye to my family and all that. He's like, what's it to me? I, you're the one that threw the cloak on him. A guy who, who fire came down from heaven. He's like, now, verses 14 to 17. Let me tell you something right now. That fish symbol, never is it Christianity. At no point ever in the Bible, the 66, bu 66 book of the Bible, of the canon of Scripture, is a fish reference to a saved man or a saint of God. They're always considered lost men. Save people are considered sheep. Israel is considered sheep. When Jesus called to Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, fishermen, he said, let, let them be fishers of men. That again is in the Gospel of Matthew. Not church age. And we haven't come to it yet, or maybe we have. A, I don't think we come to it with one of the prophets. He's going to say, I'm going to send fishers after you. I'm going to send hunters after you. Israel. Well, he sends fisher. He sends four fishermen after him. That's not a Christian. Those that are likened to fish, that's what a fish is. It, it's a reptile class animal. Well, the, the, the beast that's in heaven that's missing, where there's a lion, there's an eagle, there's a man, and there's an ox, there's one class of animals missing in Revelation 4. That's the serpent. That's the fish. That's Satan. And Job and Ezekiel will tell us about the scales of Satan. Sheep don't have scales. When Paul is made blind and his eyes are open, it says a scale. No way is that fish a representative of a Christian or God or Christ or a saint. What? 
Have you read anywhere in the Bible where outspokenly that Jesus ate sheep? Okay, I know the Passover night, but did he say, let's have lamb, or did he say, let's eat the Passover? And yet he took, in all four Gospels, I believe, it, he took two fish and he fed the multitude twice. You mean Jesus is going to take a Christian and feed him over to a bunch of lost people? When Peter came from that fishing trip, there was coals of fire and there wasn't lamb sitting on that fire. There were fish. And maketh men, okay, here we go, maketh men as the fish of the sea, lost men. And Habakkuk is looking to the Chaldeans. They're not saved. There's so kinds and so many types and different colors and of fish. So it would tell us of the diversity of the Chaldeans. Almost like maybe America. As a creepy thing, bugs, worms, insects. How come you don't got creepy things in the back of your car? A creepy thing goes up a tree, makes a cocoon, and it opens up and comes out with a beautiful butterfly. A new beginning, a new birth. Jesus said about the laws where the worm dieth not in hell. That worm goes in a cocoon, comes out something beautiful. That's what a Christian is supposed to be. They have no ruler over them. Now we have kings, 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 queens and presidents and captains and lieutenants. And that's what the writer of Proverbs says about the ant. A creepy thing. They got the queen, but she's in her job is staying at the ant hill and making more little ants. So here's these multitude of people. Men. A, a Babylonian Chaldean army having no ruler. I, it was the captain of the host that, that approached Jeremiah. Set him free. They take up all of them with the angle. And that's fishing equipment. Oh. Um, and catch them in their net. All the things that Peter, James, and John, and Andrew. You know, when James and John went with Jesus, it's recorded that they were with their father, Zebulun, and there was a mass collection of fish. And said James and John left their boat, left their father, and followed Jesus. And all, to me, almost takes for the fact is that Jesus, maybe Zebedee was old enough, but here's a fish to take care of your father. Come on. And gather them in their drag. That's in nets. It's the lines. It's all the equipment and tackle. Of a fisherman to catch fish. Therefore they rejoice her glad. Look at all the fish we caught. At one point in the Bibles in the gospel, I believe it's John, they caught all these fish. And the Holy Spirit had the nerve to say how many fish there were. Do you notice that? I learned from my past the other day. 
when Peter was out of the will of God, he didn't catch nothing. He toiled all night. After the resurrection of Jesus, Peter went out. He, he, he got in a bad mood, whatever. He goes, I'm going to go fishing. He didn't catch nothing. Until Jesus showed up. And Jesus showed up and the nets break. And they pulled it all in. And we are told how many fish they caught. Then you go in the book of Acts and they start telling how many people were added to the church. And today, 2022, you used to be sitting in church and you don't know somebody's counting your head. That may not be a fish you're counting. That may be cheese. What are you doing? You count sheep, too. You use tackle and a hook and a net to catch, listen to me, fish, and you count them. I grew up on lobster boats. We would go out there, we would catch lobsters, we count them. We would catch bluefish, we count them. And flounder, we count them. When they counted the sheep, they did not use a net, a hook. What they did is they lined the sheep up, and they went through this very narrow passage. Narrow is the way that leadeth. Did you catch what I said? And they take a rod, and they count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Rod number ten. Put them over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Grab number ten. Put them over here. That's tithing. Every tenth sheep belong to the Lord. You don't use an angle, you don't use a net, and you don't use hook to get the sheep. You use a rod, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort thee. God is using the devil to count the sheep in the I mean, in the tribulation period, going into the millennium. That's a whole nother study. When that 99, that one sheep went out and got lost, did the shepherd use a net? And when he came back, wasn't he rejoicing? But doesn't the Bible say, with the coin, one sinner that repents and gets right, the angels in heaven rejoice? Rejoice and be glad? The metamorphosis of a fish becomes a sheep. Try that one. You see, evolution, this is the devil's lie, but I, one day, I was a fish. On April 25th, 1987, I became a sheep. My father was the devil, and I, my father, God, adopted me, so that's mine. I became part of the, part of the fold of God. God says, other sheep. I say other fish. Lost men are likened to fish. You know what the Indians used to do that they taught the Europeans that came over? And I, I've done this. And it works very quite well in Connecticut. I don't know about Florida. But you're going to grow corn. Go fishing. I said, when you're going to go grow corn, go fishing. He said, what? I said, when you're going to go grow corn, when you got seed of corn, you go fishing. And when you put that corn in the ground, you put a fish. I've done it. 
cover it up with dirt. And it helps that corn to grow. It's a fertilizer. Saints ain't fertilizer. They're the seed. Therefore, now here we go, they sacrifice unto their net. Now the Philistines, that would have been Dagon. Dagon's a fish god. Whose hat looks like the Pope. And the Cardinal. You would also see him as Neptune. The Greeks. And Poseidon, I believe the Romans. I don't know what they would have been on the Babylonians. But this is not God. You see the great fish god Dagon fell down before the god of the ark. You know what God did with that fish god? He cut him up. God took that knife out and started to lay him. You do know that some of those fish you see on the back of the car, they have legs and arms like Dagon. It's supposed to be evolution, but that's Dagon. Go over there and read what body parts of Dagon across the threshold. Go, 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 go read Revelation 12 and find out what Lucifer became. Besides the devil and Satan. He became an animal that had scales. A dragon is a reptile. Of the beast in heaven, none of them had Dagon's face. Or fish head. That's a whole nother study. So they sacrificed unto their neck. They, they gave offerings to the fishing net. Oh, net, how great thou art. You're such a great net. Today you call that the internet. And people sacrifice all their time and effort for the internet. And they burn the incense unto their drag. That's tackle. Because by them their portion is fat. They're making fat. Fat would be they're making money. There's a profit. By the net and the drag. Never mind the God that gave them the fish. Genesis 1. Never mind the God that said, cast your net on the right side of the boat. Jesus. Can you just imagine that night with Peter? They're out there fishing all night and all the fish are on the right side of the boat. You imagine a man coming, oh, oh, that looks so delicious. The guy's are like, no, you don't. Oh, come on. It looks, you just stay right over there, will you? No, 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 no. That didn't happen with the fish. When God tells animals to do something, animals obey. Everybody get on the right side of that boat. Oh, okay. And they fished all night. Now, God told Peter, nets, plural. What did Peter do? He put the net out on the right side of the boat, and there were so many fish, the net began to break. So their portion was fat. What would you say? They had a network. It was their net income. And their meat, plenteous. They've got a lot of fish. I did worship the wrong God. The Chaldeans come into Judah and man, they capture Jews. The Jews are God's people, but what is God liking them to in their sinful condition? 
worshiping the queen of heaven, having a church and altar in every street corner of Jeremiah. Now, look, come on, let's go back to Jeremiah of all the worship and, the, and the, 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 the sunrise service and the burning of incense and putting a branch underneath their nose and then despising the word of God and doing what they want. And they got all kinds of gods. And what does God call them? He calls them fish. Did you get that? And those that died, where did they go? They went to hell. They went to the fish fry. Broiled fish. Where their worm dieth not. You get that? You got to read Jeremiah. The unsaved children of God are likened to fish. Who were the fishermen? The Chaldean. And they didn't go after him for good to convert them to God. They went out there to devour, to eat, to enslave, to torture, to take captivity. Who does that sound like? Satan. Yeah. Can't say that word. Shall they therefore empty their net? Okay, God. Here's him back. He's, he's concluding the whole thing in the chapter. Shall the Chaldeans empty their net? And spare and not spare continue to slay the nations? Remember we looked at that? That's Asia and Africa. If you look at the map, how they came in and took over the whole area of Asia and Africa and Israel. Now, where do you get the Christian aspect? There were four fishermen that followed Jesus. They became sheep. And what part of the world did they conquer in the book of Acts? Uh, I think one went was going down to Ethiopia. I think one went to an Italian. And Paul, his missionary journey, went all over what? Asia. You don't like the Old Testament? What We just saw the book of Acts reversed. In Habakkuk chapter 1. God said, follow me, we'll make you fishers of men. They became sheep. They were all faith. They're all going to be in heaven. They had one of them, the scales fell off his eyes. Peter ended up with an Italian in Rome. Peter said he was in Rome. The Pope says he's in Rome. Who cares what the Pope says? The guy wears a big fish hat. I always wanted to see somebody with the Pope and the Cardinals wearing a fish, sitting up there with, with a fish hook and all that trying to catch his hat. Yeah. I, 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 I would post that on Facebook every day of my life. But you know, you can find on uh, your internet, whatever browser you use, if you go to images, you can look up Dagon and the Pope or the Cardinals, and they will show you the fish's head of Dagon and the fish's head of whatever they call those hats. Because they eat fish on Friday. They are the original ones that have fish fries that the Baptist Catholics picked up. You know why the Pope said fish on Fridays only don't eat meat? Because this is true. I don't care what they say in change history. Because the fishermen came to the Pope one day and said, listen, people ain't eating our fish. We're starving to death. Now, we give some money to the church and all that. Will you? And fill with the blank. These fish that the Chaldeans caught died and went to hell. The fish that God called, be fish of the men, became sheep. And at one catch, they counted the sheep. I mean, they counted the fish. Excuse me. 
And when they went out in the book of Acts preaching the gospel, they counted the fish that became sheep. And they went all over the world where, check it out, the Chaldeans went. Even further. Kind of interesting. 